Once we have a 5S process in place, we have set the stage for further improvements. One of the most common barriers to flow is stoppages due to setting up a process to begin or switching from one process to another. Every second spent carrying out these activities is costing us the opportunity to add value. Let's take a look at how we measure setup or changeover downtime. The green sections represent the last output from the previous process on the left and the first acceptable output from the new process on the right. The section in red is where the process is stopped. Note that the horizontal axis of this model represents clock time. This is the opportunity for improvement. Any changeover activity that occurs within this area is referred to as internal. If there is any changeover activity carried out in the green sections, this is called external. By reducing the duration of the internal activity, we shorten our changeovers, which may allow us to change from one process to another more frequently. This in turn allows us to reduce batch size, lead times and increases our flexibility. Increased flexibility makes us more responsive to customer demand, providing a competitive advantage. One way to reduce the duration of the internal activity is converting it to external. This might mean carrying out preparation tasks in advance of an imminent changeover or having extra sets of equipment so assembly or cleaning tasks can be carried out in parallel with the new process. Once this has been achieved, the internal operation is reduced further by a focused effort on waste reduction. Equipment can be located where it can be accessed quickly, tools sourced to make tasks easier and extra resources applied during the changeover to eliminate waiting. So changeover improvement is about reducing the clock time where value is not being created for the customer, converting internal to external and eliminating waste from the changeover activity. Remember we can look at the changeover process as we do any other by using a value stream mapping approach and eliminating activity that does not add value, activity that does not directly contribute to being able to commence our process. Now another tool set we can use to help prevent barriers to flow, which we mentioned before, is TPM, Total Productive Maintenance. Now please don't confuse TPM with asset sweating or API or any other tool that suggests we should have the equipment that works at full capacity as constantly as possible. That might be an aim if we have unlimited demand and our equipment is the rate limiting step in meeting that demand, but this just misses the point of TPM. These are the key points to TPM. Maximising the productivity of equipment, optimising the life cycle of equipment, upskilling operators to support equipment, predicting maintenance requirements and carrying out maintenance without impacting on productivity, preventing loss from accidents, defects and lost opportunity. Now these are broad aims, but just let me illustrate with an example. Now a coffee machine is hardly a huge industrial piece of equipment, but this will make a fine example for two reasons. First of all, TPM isn't just about huge stamping dies or computerised welding equipment. It applies every bit as much to the fax, printer, photocopier or computer that plays a part in any process. Second, no matter what industry you belong to, nearly everyone is familiar with a coffee machine, whether you have one in your kitchen, work in a cafe or just buy a cup of coffee sometimes. So let's say we have a coffee machine that produces a cup of coffee every 60 seconds back to back. Recently, about every four days, it now stops because a filter in the water reservoir gets blocked. The person operating the machine knows what the problem is, but they don't know where the replacement filters are and they're not allowed to change it due to health and safety regulations. Each time this happens, the manager is called and it takes 10 minutes to get the machine to produce another cup of coffee. If this happens mid-morning or during lunch hour, people leave the queue to try the cafe across the street. Some of these people go there from now on as a result, so business starts to decrease, and this is obviously a problem, so what do we do? Well, we start off with a 5S exercise and apply some quick changeover techniques, and it turns out that we can actually produce a cup of coffee in 30 seconds, a 50% reduction in lead time, which, by the way, is a fairly typical result from an initial lean effort. Of course, this doesn't mean we should be making 120 cups of coffee an hour. Regardless, it just means we could if we had to. And now people only have to wait 30 seconds for their morning hit. 
Word spreads and business picks up again, but we still have the blocking filter problem, and with the increased throughput, it's happening more frequently. Now what do we do? Enter TPM. We gather some data and discover that the filter causes a fault between 1100 and 1400 cups consistently. At 400 cups a day, no wonder we're having a breakdown every few days on average. So we read the manual and the manufacturer recommends a filter change every 1000 cups. Now the filter costs around $2, but depending upon when it breaks down, it can prevent us from making between 1 and 20 cups of coffee every few days, as well as encouraging our customers to go elsewhere. So we decide to train all the staff in the procedure for changing the filters, keeping them close to the machine, the filters as well, and then instruct the operators to replace the filter at the start of every second day before opening regardless. This is obviously much safer as the machine is cold, eliminating the main hazard of doing this task. A roster is placed by the machine for the operator to sign off that it has been done and when. There is also a box to tick to confirm that there are at least three spare filters left, or if not, another box of filters has been ordered.